I live in a part of the country that our lakes have a cubic crap ton of shad in them. And it's one of the forage species that we as anglers around here, and if you live on a lake with a ton of shad in it, it's a forage species that we focus in on heavily because bass focus in on them heavily as well. And a lot of people think that there's one shad spawn and it happens one time a year, but actually there's multiple shad spawns that happen that you guys can capitalize on to put absolutely giant fish into the boat. And for me personally, I have won a lot of money in kayak tournaments and in bass boat tournaments around the shad spawn because it is one of the best times to be out there and catch really big fish that are hungry and feeding up. So in today's video, I wanna to talk to you guys about what a shad spawn is, how they spawn, when they spawn, and then the three types of shad spawns that you guys need to look out for so that you guys can capitalize on them and put big fish into the boat, bank, or the kayak. So the first thing is, what a shad spawn? So shad spawn is exactly like a bass spawn. It's their process of making babies. It's their process of making little shad so that they can replenish the population and you know procreate and, and make babies. Now the shad spawn very differently than a bass spawn. So a bass is a type of fish that actually dust out of bed. They make a nest, they lay their eggs in their nest, and then they the male fish will protect those eggs for a period of time. Shad are very different. They kind of do what we call the spray and pray method. They all just kind of conglomerate together. They spray all their stuff out there. That stuff settles to the bottom and whatever gets fertilized, hopefully will be able to turn into a little shad. And really with the shad, it's not about like trying to protect their young because they make billions and billions of shad with you know the intention of only you know a couple million of them actually making it. And those couple million can actually replenish the population because of how fast they grow and then how fast they can reproduce as well. And so don't think about the shad spawn of like happy Happening, like in a specific location as far as like they're on a bed it's more a specific location of they're on a top of cover and that's another thing to consider the shad spawn normally happens on hard cover things like boat docks rocks gravel anything hard like if it's hard like the deck of my boat the shad will get on that and they'll spawn on that because that's where their eggs actually have to land to be you know like valid eggs and actually get fertilized and then turn in to little shad another thing about the shad spawn to consider is when it actually happens now not only does it happen at a specific water temperature and time of year but it happens at a specific time of the day from literally the crack of dawn as soon as the sun breaks the horizon and you can see that first light to about seven eight o'clock when the sun is kind of completely up and you can see that full sun in the sky that's when shad spawn i don't know why they do that they don't do it any other time throughout the day it's just super early in the morning like that is when the shad actually spawn and once they're done they're done and a lot of times there's going to be a feeding window right in that shad spawn window that you're going to have to capitalize on so the thing about a shad spawn is you got to get your butt up early out of the bed you got to get to the lake and you got to be sitting there ready to rock and roll for when those shad start spawning because the bass will take full advantage of the fact that those shad are on the bank and that they're spawning now the last Last thing is what water temperature do shad spawn at? But like I said, there's actually three distinct shad spawns for you guys to look out for. The first one is going to be the Elwife spawn. Now the Elwife spawn will happen anywhere between 60 and 65 degrees of water temperature. And again, it's gonna happen right at the break of day, just like the rest of the shad spawns that we're gonna talk about. My favorite tool to throw during the Elwife shad spawn is actually a bladed jig. Now Elwife's anywhere from like two to four inches long. They're a little bit longer bait fish, a little bit skinnier profile of a bait fish as far as like how tall their body actually is. And so a bladed jig does a really, really good job of mimicking those Elwives and getting those fish to eat. An Elwife also has like a little bit of green and purple in it. And so probably modifying your bladed jig or throwing a bladed jig, it's got a little bit of green and purple in it, can help you to get a few more bites. The next one is going to be the thread fin shad spawn. This is going to happen anywhere from 65 to 70 degrees. Now a thread fin is a little bit shorter and a little bit fatter of a profile than an Elwife actually is. And my favorite bait to throw during the thread fin shad spawn is actually a spinnerbait. 
I love a spinnerbait because the blades on the spinnerbait do a really good job of mimicking those thread fin shad, especially if you're throwing the right size blade, it'll get those fish to eat it over a bigger blade or a smaller blade. And it's all about mimicking kind of that short fat profile that that thread fin shad actually has. And then the last shad spawn to look out for is the gizzard shad spawn. And this is the fun one because this is where you can throw big stuff. So gizzard shad will average anywhere from like five to eight inches long. These are bigger shad. This is obviously going to attract bigger bass and they're going to spawn anywhere from 65 to 75 degrees of water temperature. And one of my absolute favorite things to throw for them is a six inch cold shad because they will absolutely annihilate that coal shad because it does a really good job of looking like those bigger than average gizzard shad that those fish tend to key in on. Now sometimes they won't want to eat the coal shad and that's actually when I transition back to the bladed jig but what I do with my bladed jig is I throw a bigger profile trailer on the back and so you know, something just bigger. You want a bigger piece of plastic. It's a little bit taller. It's going to put a lot more kind of disturbance out in the water. And that is what those fish will key in on, on during the gizzard shad spawn. And if you want to see me fish in a gizzard shad spawn with a bladed jig, with my favorite bladed jig trailer on it to catch fish during the gizzard shad spawn, click this video. It's popping up right here.